This table below shows some enthalpy changes of formation values. And we need to use these to identify the value for the enthalpy change of reaction for this reaction shown below. So we've got the reaction of titanium chloride with water to form titanium oxide and some hydrogen chloride gas. So we can't work out this reaction. So we can't work out this enthalpy change of reaction directly. Therefore, we need to use a Hess cycle in order to calculate this indirectly using enthalpy change of formation values given to us. So Hess's law states that the enthalpy change of reaction is the same irrespective of the route taken. So whether you go directly from A to B or via the series of other reactions. In this case, we're going to be using our enthalpy change of formation reactions. So let's start by forming our Hess cycle. So I'm just going to rewrite out the reaction here so we've got a bit more space, like so. And because we're using enthalpy change of formation values, that means that we're forming each of these compounds. So on the bottom here, we need to write out the elements which we're forming them from. And this is just so that we can identify which way round our cycle is going to go so that we add and subtract things the correct way. So we don't need to worry about balancing these elements because we're just using these to show the correct direction of our arrows. So the arrows are going upwards because we're forming these compounds above from these elements below. So we're starting from here and we're forming these things. And then I'm just going to label each of these reactions. I'm just going to label them as enthalpy changes one, two, and three. You can label them any way you want or any uh, different way you want. And now let's do our Hess cycle calculation. So with our Hess cycles, our clockwise arrows are equal to the anti-clockwise arrows. And if I just slightly bend these arrows a bit, what we can see is that enthalpy changes one and two are going in the same direction, they're going clockwise. And enthalpy change three is going in the opposite direction, that's going anti-clockwise. So we've started to form our equation now, and we can work out enthalpy changes two and three from our table, and we use this to work out what enthalpy change one is, our enthalpy change of reaction. So therefore, we can rearrange our equation for our enthalpy change one. So now let's start to plug in some numbers from the table. So from our enthalpy change three, to start, we've got our enthalpy change of formation of that titanium oxide, plus four lots of the enthalpy change of formation of our hydrogen chloride. So we need to include our molar values for the things which we're forming. And then we're going to subtract the enthalpy change of formation of the titanium chloride plus two lots of the enthalpy change of formation of water. Now we need to be quite careful here with our brackets if we're going to put all of this in our calculator together because the calculators often get the double negatives a bit muddled up if we haven't bracketed it up. So I've been quite careful here with how many brackets I've put in. And if we work out each of these large square brackets individually, what we get is for the first one, so our enthalpy change three, we get a value of negative 1,313. And then we're subtracting enthalpy change two, which comes to negative 1,376. So overall, we get a value of plus 63 kilojoules per mole. And this matches up with option D. So that's going to be our answer.